Greetings everyone, welcome to my review of Mega Man issue 53. The countdown until the comic's hiatus has begun. I'll go ahead and say that I don't know why the series is going on hiatus. If I were to guess, it's probably because of money. Licensing things from other companies can get pricey. But let's focus on this issue by recapping recent events. The events of Mega Man 3 happened, and in the aftermath, half of Wily's robot masters decide to become productive members of society, while the other half decide to shut down permanently. Much to Mega Man's horror. Though, Roll suggests that they be preserved in some kind of robot museum. Meanwhile, Dr. Wily was rescued by the mysterious Mr. X, who drafts Wily into his services so Wily could continue causing havoc with robots. The reason? Mr. X wants to scare people into stop using robots in the future. Oh, and uh, there was a lead-up to some crossover with other game franchises or something, but to be fair, World Unite does explain something we'll get into in this issue. So, let's get started. Mega Man's flying on Rush to Guts Man's current location because the big robot needs help. Mega Man immediately thinks robot attack by Wily Bots. Nope. Instead, Guts Man needs Rock's help to carry the deactivated Robot Masters. Yep, Guts Man along with Concrete Man are setting up the Robot Museum. Concrete Man and Guts Man discuss what will happen to them when their warranty's up. Concrete Man wants to be recycled, while Guts Man himself wants to be displayed in the Robot Museum. Obviously, it's foreshadowing events depicted in the games Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 7, respectively. All this decommissioning talk upsets Mega Man. Concrete Man and Guts Man let him know that there are tools, but Mega Man himself will be fine since he's Light Sun. Mega Man's upset that the Robot Masters are content with their status as lifelike tools, that he was forced to fight and damage them. Meanwhile, in the X Compound, Mr. X scolds Wily for using his resources to kidnap a little girl. Wily says it's part of a bigger plot. Mr. X orders Lady Y to look after the girl, and is Lady X a Cylon? Um, once the two are alone, Wily reveals something that a lot of people, myself included, have already figured out. Mr. X is an older Xander Payne. And here's where the recent crossover comes into play. You see, it technically did not happen thanks to Xander Payne causing a time paradox reset. One side effect was that some characters have vague memories of the crossover. Wily's among those characters, which explains how he knew enough to rationalize the Mr. X Xander connection. This leads to the second side effect of the time paradox reset. Xander was sent back in time 30 years. While he's unable to change his past for reasons, he decides to use future knowledge to acquire wealth and power and create his Mr. X identity. Regardless, his overall goal is the same. Rid the world of robotic machines. Shadow Man teleports in. Yep, he's still loyal to Wily. He fooled everyone by saying he'll be a productive member of society. Which begs the question, how did the two get in touch? Well, the recent crossover did have the two interact, and Shadow Man stated that he was still loyal to Wily. Wily may have retained memory of the conversation and contacted Shadow Man sometime after the time paradox reset. Anyway, Shadow Man gives an update on the construction of his new bases, and that the world still believes he's dead. Wily then orders him to high-five him. Yeah, that just happened. Shadow Man also reports that the seven remaining Wily bots have adjusted to their new functions. We got Airman working on meteorological studies with Iceman, Bubble Man working with Oil Man, Pump Man, and Splash Woman to stop water pollution, Flash Man arguing with Time Man whether or not to stop or slow down a time skimmer experiment, Wood Man taking care of trees along with Cut Man, Hard Man and Steak Man working with Bomb Man on clearing land, and Spark Man working with Elect Man at the city power plant. Throughout this montage, Mega Man's been watching them. Mega Man goes to Fire Man and explains his problem. Does he need to continue to fight as Mega Man to be happy? Fireman responds that it's not fighting that sustains him, it's helping people. With the world at peace, as far as they know, Mega Man's no longer needed, and Rock can return to being just a helper robot. We go to Dr. Light, who remembers the very early days of Light Labs along with Wily. Yes, despite Wily turning against him, Light still mourns over his fallen friend. Rock returns to the lab and declares that he's going to hang up his armor and buster and become a simple assistant robot once again. Dr. Light's amazed that Rock endured so much but remained pure-hearted. 
Whether or not the little guy is Rock or Mega Man, Dr. Light will always be proud of his son. The good feelings end with Otto telling them they have to watch something on television. That something is Dr. Cossack introducing himself to the world and declaring his intentions to take on Mega Man with his robots in order to prove his superiority to Dr. Light. Boy, this sounds familiar. Even the characters realize this. Dr. Light wonders if there's something more going on since it's not like Cossack to do this. Still, the world will see him as a villain and his robots will hurt people. So, Mega Man suits up again. Along with Rush and the newly completed Eddie, the Blue Bomber is ready to once again fight for everlasting peace. This issue is bittersweet. Throughout the story, there's a sense of finality to it, with Rock discussing what to do in peaceful times and how some robot masters get along with each other in a Where Are They Now montage. It also sets up the events of the next three main games. First, Mega Man 4 due to Dr. Cossack making his intentions to Dr. Light and the world known. By the way, the speech Dr. Cossack gives in the comic is a modified version of the speech from the Mega Man 4 instruction manual. The difference being the version in the manual was directed at Dr. Light, and the version in the comic is more generalized. Another setup for Mega Man 4, the line about Wily kidnapping a little girl. Spoilers, it's Dr. Cossack's daughter, Kalinka. Wily's plan in Mega Man 4 involves kidnapping Kalinka and forcing Cossack to attack Mega Man with his robots. The setup for Mega Man 5 is this appearance of an under-construction Crystal Man, a robot master from that game. And of course, there's Mega Man 6 with the Mr. X thing. Shadow Man teleporting in to report the status of the new bases. More than likely Wily Castle 4 and beyond. Mega Man's behavior in this issue might appear selfish, and it probably is, but remember folks that he's programmed with a child's mentality. And I pretty much touched upon this in past reviews. What I will add is that he still has this need to fight in a time of peace. Remember that Mega Man is essentially a child soldier fighting a war against Wily and his machines. When that task is done, Mega Man doesn't know what to do. Fireman reminded him that Rock was helping people. The reason he became Mega Man was to help people who can't defend themselves against these powerful machines. Now with the world seemingly at peace, Rock could go back to being a simple lab assistant. When Dr. Cossack made his announcement, everyone in the lab realizes that the world still needs Mega Man. Back to the whole finality thing. It also brings the comic series full circle as Dr. Cossack's transmission is parallel to Dr. Wily's in issue 1. Heck, even the panels are similar. Even the speech between Light and Rock here is a callback to the speech Light gave him in issue 1. I should note that there are two versions of the ending text box. One that basically tells the reader to see the rest of the story, play Mega Man for the game, and one without. The more I thought about it, the one with the play the game message is the correct version. Here's why. 1. The text looks a little different, like it was added at the last minute. And 2. It's on the print copy I have. I don't want to read too much into what this means, but this reminds me of those backup stories in the main Sonic comics, which were essentially advertisements for the new Sonic game, and the reader would have to play the game in order to find out the rest of the story. Ryan Jampol's the artist, and this is his best work yet. The guy really loves Mega Man. Heck, he talks about it on his Twitter account quite frequently. This issue gets an 8. Again, there's a sense of finality, while at the same time, there's the message that the fight will always continue. Next time, we'll see Blues finally making the transition from Breakman to Proto Man. Until then, have a good day, and be safe. The scene with Wily ordering Shadow Man to high-five him. There's something stupidly hilarious about it, but I like it all the same.